Hello again, it's Lock Noob, and I think many of you will know me as the person behind the concepts which turned into Sparrow's check pins, scrooge pins, and munition pins, the challenge lock pins, which are now commercially available through Sparrow's Lock Picks. And I'm really ha proud of, um, of these pins. I'm really happy with the way they turned out. Um, and I think these check pins look the least like my custom pins, but the munition pins and scrooge pins look almost identical. But nevertheless, I'm like so um, proud of these pins. I'm so proud that you know some of my concepts and designs have been made commercially available for other people to enjoy. And as a lock sporter, somebody who's really passionate about lock sport, getting other people to enjoy stuff that you made um, all over the world is a fantastic feeling. And I want to display these pins in a meaningful way, which means that people can explore them and, and see them, you know, because I want to show them off. They they probably don't mean anything to anybody else, but they mean something to me. And yeah, I, I, I think I'm rightfully proud of them and I want to show them off. So the ways I came up with before were, you know, putting them in, in an acrylic lock. And that's okay, but there is, it, it sort of warps the... Um, the view a little bit you can't see them from the underside it's okay but it's not it's not really what I was aiming for so that's one way of doing it the other way was um, to put them into actually this <laughs> I didn't put them in I think this is a, uh, a, a, a Sparrows cutaway with the check pins you can actually buy this from Sparrows website um, and again that's okay but it includes most of the pins you can't see the top and the bottom so I got to thinking, how can I display these in a meaningful way, but also a way which means that you don't get the discoloration of, uh, that happens with brass over time as it tarnishes, as it's exposed to oxygen. So I came up with... Yeah, there's another problem with the pins. They just roll everywhere. I came up with this. So these are epoxy cast resin cubes. I found a whole bag of uh, these online for about £10 of different sizes, of which this was the perfect size. It's somewhere around 4x4x4 four by four by four centimetres. And, uh, and, well, you can see there. And I just thought to myself, if I can mix a, a 2 to 1 epoxy resin, half fill the mould, you'll probably see the, the, where that fill line is just here. Um, put the pins in and then backfill it, then that should work. Um, and then I, I was showing some of my early ones off on Twitter and somebody called Jay Lawson uh, said, why don't you get them engraved? So I thought that's a great idea. So I took them to engravers to engrave. But I hope you really like that because it means you can just see them all from every angle, underside, top side, and really just, you know, you can give that to people. Hopefully they won't discolor very much because they're trapped in this um, airtight epoxy. It means that, you know, people can have a look, I can show them off, I can display them in a meaningful way. And I didn't just do the check pins, I actually did the um, munition pins. And I had them in a heptagon, which means that you can actually explore the bottom. You can actually look and see the firing pins and the undersides and the top sides. A bit of an occlusion there, nothing to do about it. The engraver gave me a free S at the end of munitions, despite me writing munition down on a piece of paper. Needless to say, I didn't have to pay for that but it wasn't that bad a mistake that I thought it was deserving of um, recasting uh, mostly because casting these is a massive pain you've got no idea the pain it's so awkward and horrible to do that's why you'll see that there are a few air bubbles in I just don't mind you know what that's fine this is actually really really good for not having a vibrating table or a vacuum chamber to uh to, to help draw those bubbles out. This is insanely difficult to do. A respect to anybody who actually does this as a, uh, as a hobby. Um, I, I got no fun out of it. This is a Scrooge pin. It's probably the worst in terms of bubbles, but um, the clarity of the epoxy was so good, I didn't mind. And uh, these are in, a, again, a different arrangement, which is another good thing about these cubes. You can arrange them how you like, because the Christmas cracker is let down. You see the Christmas tree really well, the wine glass. You can actually look, look down and see that it's... Um, you know, hollow, look from the underside. Yeah, so I really like these. These are, for me, good enough. I've got no desire to go back and recast any of these. They are perfect for what I need them to be. And I think they look pretty good, all things considered. You basically ignore the, air, the small amount of air bubbles after a while. Um, and certainly, I think they're a big improvement on how I did display these, where people can't, well, they can see how they work functionally, but they can't actually see 
um, the, you know, the the pin designs very well. So um, hints and tips if you're going to try this. So I was using a 12 hour uh, two to one epoxy mix. Obviously half filling my mold, putting the pins in after the 12 hours, very important. Don't try and do it earlier. And then uh, back filling with the epoxy on top. Whatever you do, make sure you use at least a third more epoxy mix and you need to do your pour. The larger volumes um, stirred very, very, very slowly over a long period of time will give you much better results in terms of less air bubbles. Pour everything into the mold uh, and into your mixing pots very, very, very slowly. If you don't, then you'll end up with all sorts of problems. So this is what happens when you don't mix it thoroughly enough. You get this wonderful ripply heat haze effect. Um, this one is actually a good enough cast that I'm going to give it to somebody who, um, who, who asked whether they could have it, and I said yes. Don't ask for any more. I've got no more um, nice ones like this, but you can see it's a bit heat hazy. So I did recast um, just as a comparison. Hopefully you can see the, the difference there. This is what happens when you rush and you don't mix things properly over a long period of time. Uh, other things, don't try to release your mold too soon because you end up um, taking out this half set epoxy, um, which is like a jelly. And that's what happens when that, that occurs. Um, but it's okay because both of these um, you know, taught me lessons. I hadn't done any casting before, uh, so I've learned a lot. And it also gave me some stuff that I could use to um, test engrave on the back. So we were seeing, is it better looking through to the engraving or actually um, having it at the front like this, but it doesn't look so good at the front. So we, we did them all from the back like this. Other things don't, over pour if you pour in too much volume and you put too much hardener in then you'll end up basically cooking it and it'll overheat discolor hopefully you can see that there's a more yellow on top and less yellow on the bottom so this is overheated it's also retracted which happens when it overheats um, and you see these weird kind of like teardrop inclusions at the side pretty horrible actually um, but this again this block allowed me to test sand it see whether it could be sanded this is 400 grit quite smooth actually um, because what happens is no matter what you do you always get a meniscus on top um, and this is this is normal but I just wanted to sand it back and all of these have been sanded with uh, 400 800 uh, 1200 1500 2000 2500 then uh, grit uh, wet and dry paper all wet processed and then finished with metal polish and uh, a microfiber cloth. So yeah, you can see all my um, mistakes, uh, but these mistakes allow me to get these much, much, much nicer castings at the back, so they serve the purpose. And again, you know, this one is good enough to send to somebody who um, who wanted it, so, so that was really good. And, uh, you know, apart from me hoping you found this video entertaining and, uh, and, and you know, that you, I hope that you like what I've done, um, I also hope that you think, well, maybe I could do something with some of my custom pins or challenge pins or other things that you've been working on. I, I actually think that um, the resin casting is uh, quite a useful technique. I know that um, I have a, a, a pick from Rev Tattoo, uh, and he did some resin casting on the actual pick handle itself, uh, and that was really, really nice. So yeah, it's, it's definitely worth a, a go. Um, if you do have some small parts or pins that you want to display, I, you know, I would recommend trying this resin casting, but it is really, really tough to do and to, to do well. Um, if you can get it professionally done, although it'll cost you a lot of money, but saying that the resin itself costs about uh, 45 pounds per litre, um, somewhere around $56 a litre or something like that. So it's, it's not cheap stuff anyway. So yeah, all in all, this was quite an expense. On, um, on my part, but I wanted to do it and I wanted a way to display the pins and I, I think I was successful. Anyway, hope you found that interesting. Uh, let me know if you do this little project yourself, really interested to know in the comments and I'll see you all next time.